What's going on? My name is Brandon Campbell. Born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm going on a journey to explore culture, living like a local and finding what's truly authentic in each country. So let's explore these places together for the very first time. Meeting new people, having real conversations, and having new experiences. The goal is to bridge the gap between American society and the rest of the globe, emphasizing we can all be global citizens. Now I believe the best in humanity is realized when we learn from and embrace the differences within each other. In the end, it'll make us all a little more open-minded, a little more inspired by the people in the world around us, and with an ever-growing, extended family. All right, y'all, today I'm in Sofia, Bulgaria, and right now I'm about to go whitewater rafting for the first time. Yes, whitewater rafting. I'm kind of late. We're supposed to meet at the stadium. It's like 30 minutes away. It's really far, so I'm about to run. I'm about to cut this off, and I'll see y'all on the other side. Hopefully, I make it. I can't miss this. It wasn't cheap. I was running, came to an open street. I thought I was going to run the whole way. Yeah. Didn't happen, and I ran into Luke. Luke, you're on camera. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> So I'm trying to hail a taxi. Luke pulls up and he's like, yo, you're going rafting. So here we are. So I guess I didn't have to run the whole way. Looking forward to an exciting day. We're going whitewater rafting. If you never see me again. That means this thing didn't work. Or I lost it. Let's see how it goes. Hey, if I die, get this to my mom, okay? Sofia, Bulgaria. This is called um, Old Mountain. It's a range. Uh -huh. It goes from one end of Bulgaria all the way to the other. Uh -huh. uh, so it crosses the whole country. Right. And when we're in part of it, it's not very high mountain range. Right. It's mostly like that. Laura is a part of our city team for the group that I'm traveling with, but she's also a yoga teacher and very a, per a person that's born and raised in Bulgaria. But I just wanted to have a conversation with Laura, as you know, I love to do with people in every place that I go to about you know what's true for you you know living in bulgaria some of the things you take pride in bulgaria is the first place that i've been to on our trip that's been a little bit more relaxed like it has that mix of being in a city mm -hmm. but also having getting to enjoy the wilderness you know we got to go white water rafting and today we're doing horseback riding which i'm excited about mm -hmm. what gives you pride about i guess being from here kind of how was it growing up for you um so i was born in a a very transitional period, 1989. Mm -hmm. This is exactly where the communist uh, regime fell. Uh, so luckily I don't remember any of that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was very turbulent times. Um, people suddenly were free and they could start their own business, they could travel, they could do anything they want. So I'm very, very privileged that my generations, everyone my age or maybe one or two years younger, uh, older, um, we don't have this heavy spirit of the past times. Right. Um, we have don't have the fear, uh, so we have more ideas of how things can be better, and right. we have more. Actually, whatever you want to do nowadays, it can happen so easily. Right. You just have to know exactly what you want to achieve, and uh, work hard for it, and right. you have all the elements in place to achieve it. I had a conversation with a family in Prague where the father remembered not being able to travel outside of Eastern Europe yeah. until he was in his 20s. Yeah. So it's interesting now to be in an, a place that was even further east, also a, a part of you know the Eastern Bloc and those limitations, but in a communist regime. And um, it's interesting to hear, I guess, about some of the modern developments and changes that, that have gone on. You can kind of still see some of the remnants and history of uh, the communism. And I learned about some of the history of the buildings and the style of architecture because mm -hmm. of you know communist uh, rule. 
for me nature is like the most sacred and the biggest treasure we have and if we're if we're not raising up to protect it then it's a it's a really a big loss it's a big loss of potential and I, I agree and I see in the, in the countryside in Bulgaria it's like when you look at the mountains they forest everywhere it's like I've never I'm, I'm grew up in the west the west side of North America mm -hmm. and I live in a valley so there's mountains that surround us but our mountains are you know big rocks I know you said that there's mountains like that in the north but mm -hmm. here and around surrounding Sofia I mean it looks like we have these things at home called chia pets right and there's these it's like these little clay structures that you water for fun when you water them after a while they just turn they have green hair all over them yeah and that's what the mountains look like is welcoming that you believe is welcoming melt welcoming to other cultures and or is it something that's maybe generationally based because a lot of times in the places that I've been and even at home the acceptance of like other people it really depends on how much exposure mm -hmm. those generations have had to those people yeah how would you kind of describe the social dynamic here if you could I think that looking back into history we've been quite um open and accepting mm -hmm. for other people um, I mean take the Jews um, mm -hmm. they had a shelter in Bulgaria everywhere else they were uh, being um, right. pursued but we have a really big Jew Jewish community mm -hmm. in Bulgaria uh, no they were really safe here mm -hmm. during the war uh, I think so because I was learning that, that Bulgaria is a place really of a lot of religious acceptance right there's yep. mosques there's synagogues and churches right yes this is uh, one of the few places where actually all the, the three religions can uh, live together in such um, um, peaceful terms right so one thing I, I, I've noticed is that people uh, in Bulgaria you know proud Bulgarians and of course they speak Bulgarian as they should Bulgarians I think a little bit harder in my mind only because of the Cyrillic alphabet. I think I mess up. I always mess up when I try to say Blagodaria. Blagodaria, very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Three weeks in Bulgaria, yeah. you're saying Blagodaria. Well, Some I people... said it first week. Really? Yeah. Nice. Because I, I think there's certain things that are important, like certain phrases that you should, any place that you go to, if that's the... Culture. Right, if that's the culture, if that's the, the primary language of that country, you should know how to say, please, thank you, you know yeah good morning you know things of that nature or and then my favorite my favorite phrase is can you speak english <laughs> but yeah so i i'm definitely that's something that i always try to do at least a little bit though to show like respect you know mm -hmm. all right guys we're here with uh laura slavlov now last time we were talking we were in uh the mountain Sta how do you say that <laughs> so we were there enjoying a day in the mountains with the horses and Laura and I had a chance to chat but we had to cut it short um, because we we're about to go so now this is gonna be part two of the conversation let's get to it so, so we had to switch locations because the little girl literally kicked the camera and she wouldn't leave it alone but anyway back to what we were saying um, so you being a person that's all about um, kind of being open health and wellness you know, meditation, mindfulness, from your perspective, um, what, what's an opportunity that you see for people to unite better around the world? I guess that would be the first question. I think people should uh, go back to nature, uh -huh. go back to the basics. Uh, everything has become so complicated uh -huh. and take stress, for example. Can you ask like a person 200 or 200 years ago what the stress is? I don't think they even have an idea. Yeah, even <laughs> a definition for that. It's like a new disease. And uh, once you're in nature, the first thing that comes to mind is that everything is okay just the way it is. We don't have to change ourselves, we don't have to change things all the time. This urge to constantly do something, I think this is what stresses, out, stresses us out. And then in the end, we're not being ourselves. We go away from love and we go towards fear and all those emotions that go with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think more and more people should just go back to nature, respect nature, take care, do their part, take their part. Find nature in the spot where they live. Because I think everywhere there is research for it. Nature as a means to de stress, as a means to detach, and a means to 
become more, I guess, uh, present within within yourself? How do you think that relates to how we connect with other people? Very easy because nature is a way to reconnect with yourself, and once you reconnect with yourself, you will connect with others easier. When you forget who you are and what you stand for, then it's also more difficult. So we're here with, um, now tell me how to say it correctly, Ines? Ines. Ines? Islam? Islami. 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 Is? 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 Yami. 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 Is Yami. It's also almost like Islam, it just has a... Yeah, yeah. Is Yami. So Ines, you're from, you're from Serbia, right? What city are you from in Serbia? I was born in Prokuplje. Okay. Uh, it's down part of Serbia. Uh -huh. My my parents are from Kosovo, but I lived in north part of Serbia, and I live in the central part of Serbia. Okay. So I consider myself just as a Serbian. You're well seasoned uh, Serbia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we went to Split Croatia, as I mentioned, and that was, I guess, my second introduction to Serbia. And um, then I got a little bit of background from Helena telling me all about uh, the Serbian. Croatian conflict um, and then kind of how that affected the dynamic between Serbian and Croatian people although some people didn't even they were so young that they weren't you know involved in that conflict but it still kind of trickles down the younger generations I'm, I'm really not interested in politics uh, no wars whatever in Serbia we had as far as I know wars on every 10 years there was something happening like right. so on so at this point I just don't find it more relevant to talk about it and so on I think especially between this, this relationship between Croatia and Serbia I think the what I experienced as a traveler not as a Serbian as a traveler that uh, many older Croatians who branch to it still and talk about it mm -hmm. in Serbia you're not going to hear about it like mm -hmm. just you know, just they just went over it, and that's my point. Like it just it happened. What you can do now, like pay off something and so on. Like my yeah. reason why I came to Bulgaria was war as well. Really? Bombarding. What? Yeah. In 1999, uh -huh. uh, Serbia got bombarded by US. <laughs> uh, see, that shows you how much like people from the US know about conflicts abroad. Abroad, because I didn't know that. Um, tell me more about like what what happened during that. Like, they, there are a lot of reasons why it happened and so on and so on. Basically, uh, something that I find the, 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 more, the most, how to say it, like, as the most relevant reason is that Serbia was ju is just in the center of the Balkans. Someone needed to calm down, someone needed to take it out. It's a kind of like a crossroad of all the Balkan countries if you look in the map. So I look at from that, on, on that situation. I look at it just simply as a fight for the land, uh -huh. whatever. Uh, so when the uh, US bombarded Serbia and so on, one of the things that I learned during that bombarding is hate towards Bulgarians, specifically. Mm -hmm. Because Bulgarians gave airspace. They and gave airspace, to, airspace to, to Americans for, yes. to, to fly into Serbia. Yeah, and okay. my born city is very close to, um, to the border of Bulgaria. Okay. And I spent three months in a basement, like basically, uh, I'm not sure should I use these words on the, no, <laughs> the you camera, can say but whatever, so whatever eating and shitting on the same place, eating, shitting and sleeping on the same place in the basement with right. seven other families. Right. So that, that was... And you guys never came out? <laughs> no, we were going out, but right. there is a siren that goes danger, right, no right, danger, right. so you go out 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then half an hour, then you spend inside like three days and so on, so... Right. But that time I remember also some nice way because it was the time when the families bonded the most, when the neighbors bonded the most, right. when everyone became equal. It was a community. It was a community. It didn't matter anymore do you have money or you don't have money right. because money didn't have any value anymore. Right. It was we need to survive, we need to prepare food, there are kids, we need to take care of each other, there has to be a clean water, there has to be, or someone needs to wash clothes, someone needs to wash dishes, whatever. Right. So it is like a community that actually bonded within that period. And then I was like, oh, this was super normal, I actually <laughs> had a lot of fun with them. <laughs> so, and then, so a couple of months later, they gave me a call. They needed someone uh, to work on the projects and incoming exchange. Bring foreigners to Bulgaria, some right. projects. So, so, 
let's look back up a minute. So the people that you met when you were in Poland, so are the same people that you end, ended up giving you a call about some, coming to Bulgaria to do work? Yes. So you did you, when you met them, was it through work or was it was well, it through the work you were doing at the time? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And what type of work was that? It was volunteer work. NGO. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we had a conference where basically we were learning how to develop social projects. Uh, each country, like uh, it, it was European conference, so people from Europe, though not just from Europe, but most people were from Europe coming on the conference and so on. Right. So we were sharing ideas. How did we do this in our country? How did you do it in your country? What right. like best case practices, worst case practices? What <laughs> we should do? What we should not do? Basically, everyone meets on one space, share the ideas. And then people take home what they think is relevant for their reality and mm. develop their own projects and businesses and impact. Right. So, and what did that NGO do at the time that you were working with when you went to Poland and met the Bulgarians? Uh, the NGO was formed after Second World War, uh, and basically the the point of the NGO uh, is exchange. Exchange uh, brings diversity. Was it the, also Isaac? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I stayed very long time in the organization. I really, really love the organization. Okay, so I don't think we said this on camera. So just for so Isaac is an NGO that's focused on exchange. Yes. Um, and it was previously a st was a student-run organization. It was a student-run organization. Um, Today it's a youth-run organization because okay. many people finish with the studies like 23, 24, 25. But there are people that until 30 they're interested to work and help and some people wake up earlier, some people wake up later on. So in order not to have those uh, how to say limits, no you cannot be you ten six, you cannot be in the organization, they work today. So how long have you been here now? Uh, I spent three and a half years then. I came for a year, I spent three and a half years. Uh -huh. uh, then I left. Basically I came in 2011. I think I stayed until May more for a half year or so. That in May 2015. And then I went to India for a year and a half. Wow. Then I came back here, from Serbia, I came back here. <laughs> and then because of some family issues, really? I went to Serbia and now I'm just traveling Serbia. Uh, Sofia. Okay, so would you call Sofia home now? Is, is Sofia like where you, the main place where you're. Yeah. This is where you live. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know if you ever feel that, that like, I traveled a lot. I mm. traveled 58 countries. So, uh, when I get out of the bus or when I get out of the plane or whatever, when I step in Sofia, I feel like I can breathe. Yeah. Like, this is my place. <laughs> I can breathe. Here. Yeah, like, yeah. just, oh, it's okay, I'm safe now. <laughs> it's yeah. there. Yes. That's, that's pretty good. So, uh, my first situation when I came here, uh, in my what they told me don't go to Sofia, to Bulgaria, whatever. And there is a, a word uh, in Bulgarian that means driving. In Serbian, means something else. It's rude. What does it mean? Fuck. <laughs> so uh, I came here with a train and I went out of the train station. I, I will never forget that, that day. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. And then there's a cab driver telling me, you know, in my understanding, telling me, do you want me to fuck you? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm going to the other one, the other one says something similar, I'm like, what, where did they come, what happened? <laughs> so, you know, I just picked my bags and went back to the train station and I called a friend, uh, one of those friends that I met in Poland, and I was like, these people are so rude, can someone come and pick me up? Like, right. <laughs> I don't know how to take a cab. <laughs> and they were like, whoa, what happened? Okay, we are coming, they came. Uh, with a, with a cab, they took me and so on. I went to the flat, I'm, of course I was exhausted. I was traveling right. 10 hours, then I, I had that situation on the train station. <laughs> and we went to the flat, I had my coffee and so on, so on. and when they explained me that that word means actually driving, they <laughs> want me to drive you. <laughs> I felt first very stupid, second uh -huh. very embarrassed because I had some prejudice in my head. And already, even though I didn't want, somewhere there it was that thing, okay, maybe something will go wrong. And so on, but from that moment when I realized what that means um, and that funny situation, and right. how I actually behave towards the cab drivers. No! <laughs> how you behave towards the cab you drivers? Can ask them no, that's good. Man. I guess my follow up question would be how does it compare, you know, how does your experience here, how did that compare to, to home? And what city? And then how does it compare to home? And then when you tell me how it compares to home, tell me if your city is like a small city compared to Sofia or if it's a. A rural area, like what's so, that? So, uh, 
the first city I, I'm born in, it's very small city. Everyone knows everyone. Uh, and we had a lot of issues. That's why we moved to north because Kosovo started having issues and so on. And we are Muslims. So as a Muslim, Muslim family, we had issues. Like right. they would come and throw the stones in your windows or whatever. So my father has four daughters and a son. So he was okay. I have a lot of daughters. I don't want something to happen to them. So let's go to the north. Right. And culturally-wise, it was uh, it was a cultural shock for me because uh, in Subodica everything is in Serbian and Hungarian. Like, even the names of the streets, uh, everything. Documents are in two languages. Then you have uh, 18 different religions in the city. There is a uh, synagogue, mosque. I don't know which kind of church is there. There, like uh, Buddhist church or whatever, like a chapel or whatever it is. So it was just. It was completely different. I, I faced with it and I really liked it. So I started exploring Subit as a city as such uh -huh. and so on. But then when I moved to Belgrade, I realized that Serbia compared to Bulgaria is still way closed. Like maybe it's uh, developed in some ways, but when it comes to culture understanding, when it comes to respect to people in some sense of, I would say the Croatia is the same. We are very similar, it doesn't matter how much we try to be different and so on, we are very similar and it's a fact. Because you've been to 58 different countries, I don't know how long it's going to take you to get to that many different countries. <laughs> but, you know, in your travels, um, you know, in your experience, what do you think, um, as a people, unites us all? Or, and, yeah, what do you think United States if you think anything at all? Yeah. I, I just cannot say anything more than love and empathy, understanding. Yeah. It's how this person feels. We need to get out of the room so this person needs some private time and so on. This empathy of feeling and so on, it's, it's a personal choice. You decide to do it or you decide not to do it. You decide to be selfish and just take your own feelings in consideration or you decide to take the in consideration the feelings of people around you, the right. society, the environment that you are in and be more humble and say, okay, I'm not the priority today. Right. This and person needs more. Empathy of feeling and so on, it's, it's a personal choice. You decide to do it or you decide not to do it. You decide to be selfish and just take your own feelings in consideration or you decide to take the in consideration the feelings of people around you, the right. society, the environment that you are in and be more humble and say, okay, I'm not the priority today. Right. This and person needs more. And you know what, I, don't, I think that's very true, but I also think it's not a perfect, <coughs> it's not a perfect process. So, yeah, because although it's something that I desire um, to receive and, and desire to give at the same time, it's like something you're passionate about. It's not something I'm perfect, perfect with, you know, this is like, an ever-going process that I'm seeking to be more empathetic and seek, seeking to receive empathy. But sometimes there's those moments where you know you have to check yourself because you find yourself being a little bit selfish, or you know somebody pisses you off and you're like, why can't you just see what I'm seeing? Like you know, and not taking it, taking a step to humble yourself and be and seeing it from their perspective. So it is a, it is a, I think an ever going process. I don't think anyone's ever perfect like man that person is it's just completely true. Right. Love is the feeling that you wanna just give to someone. Imagine if this world would be of people who want to give. Everyone needs attention and everyone needs a hug and everyone needs care. So if you keep giving everyone will receive. Right. If you're just not wow. selfish enough to you know always be in that mood to just give me, I need, I need, I need, I need. Right. So you just open yourself and just give. If everyone gives, how beautiful this world would be. Wow, that's crazy. I, it's so simple, <laughs> but I never thought of it that way. If, if everyone gives, everyone will receive. Everyone that's will crazy. receive. No, that's, that's, that's real, actually. It's just mind-blowing. I had mind-blowing conversation <laughs> just stayed in my head. It's like, wow, no, that's crazy.